Let's talk about the killing charges uh, with regard to Kyle Rittenhouse, Andrew, because I think you're right. A lot of these, and I hate to say it because it's so insensitive, but these ankle biter charges that are being layered on are 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 somewhat irrelevant if he get if he gets hit with one of the murder charges. Can we talk to some of the killing charges and perhaps the whether you feel they're legally valid or not? Yeah, I mean, I, I just don't again because he was so clearly in flight from the people attacking him. It's it's these are textbook cases of self defense against life threatening attack in each and every instance. Um, and I know there's a tendency for people because again the media picks a side and they've clearly picked the side of Antifa and Black Lives Matter and the not the side of Kyle Rittenhouse here. So uh, they continue to uh, disseminate a narrative to make Rittenhouse look somehow guilty, which again is an uphill battle. If you've watched the video for any of these intentional use of force charges, the, the killing or the murder or attempted murder charges. So they'll, they'll argue things like, well, you know, he, he, he can't argue self-defense because he went there with a gun, but that's not a crime to go there with a gun. And, and by the way, even if that was a crime, say, even if he was guilty of the gun possession charge, which I don't believe to be the case, but let's pretend that he's guilty of the gun possession charge, that because he was 17 years old, it was illegal for him to be walking around in public with that AR platform. That has nothing to do with the merits of his self-defense claim. It's a completely separate thing. You don't lose self-defense because you're committing some some unrelated non-use of force uh, offense in a, in a separate legal context. So he could, in theory, be guilty of the gun charge, and that's got nothing to do with, in any way, undermining the merits of his self-defense cases. But can I can I pause you right there, Andrew? Because sure. I want to ask, as, as I understand some of these laws that we call stand your ground laws, for lack of a better term, do, am I misunderstanding that? In, I thought in some of those instances, like if you were in uh, the middle of a, a your drug dealing, your lifestyle is you're a drug dealer, and you use. And you try to claim, you know, use a firearm, you try to claim self-defense law, you could lose that. Am I wrong in that? So there are some states that make self-defense conditional on not being engaged in unlawful conduct, period. Uh, and that would be the kind of scenario you're talking about. So someone's involved in a drug deal uh, and they're attacked. Drug dealers are robbed all the time, folks, because they have things people like. They have drugs and money, right? So they're frequent targets of attack. So they they're typically armed because of that. Uh, and a, someone could be a street corner drug dealer and Someone tries to commit an armed robbery of them and they pull their own gun and they defend themselves like anyone else would might defend against an armed robbery. In most states, the fact that they were engaged in drug dealing does not lose them self-defense. They're still entitled to defend themselves against that armed robbery. Now, they're, they're on the hook for whatever the drug charge is. That doesn't change. Um, but they haven't lost self-defense simply because they were otherwise engaged in some criminal activity. Unless, of course, the criminal activity is what triggered the use of force. So normally, uh, so for example, as, if someone goes into a liquor store, points a gun at the clerk and is committing an armed robbery, well, that loses him self-defense. He's the first person to threaten or use unlawful force. He doesn't have a self-defense claim. But normally, if you're, if you're just selling drugs to people, you're not engaged in the use of force. You're engaged in, you know, an unlawful, but uh, a form of commerce. There are a few states that do condition self-defense on not being engaged in unlawful conduct at all. And in those minority of states, the drug dealing would lose you self-defense. But Wisconsin's not one of those states. Gotcha. So it wouldn't apply hey, in the folks, so Stay safe.